right, Joe, tell us what you know about Operation Praying Mantis. So as a, as a young Lance Corporal uh, at the time in the U.S. Marine Corps, I was assigned to Marine Air Ground Task Force 88-2, I believe it was called. Uh, I'm not positive on that. It's 88-something. Uh, but it was a, a, a team put together with an infantry battalion, a command element, uh, and an air element because Iran and Iraq were slugging it out in the Iran-Iraq war. And Iran began sinking oil tankers, claiming that they were um, providing war material and therefore were valid targets. Uh, and it was driving up uh, world oil prices. So what we did was we reflagged Kuwaiti tankers with American flags. We deployed infantry units on board uh, and uh, we began escorting and protecting the tankers. That was the earnest will part. Uh, when we arrived, we took over a derelict tanker that was just sitting at the end of the Persian Gulf. And we uh, we didn't have the cool LHDs that we have now. They were still being developed. We had some, but they weren't the, the helicopter carriers that they are today. So we took over an old oil tanker and literally turned it into a base, landing helicopters on the deck, running amphibs out of it, doing uh, all kinds of crazy stuff a lot of the uh, a lot of the smaller landy craft uh, to use as patrol boats and, and some of the uh, the older Navy seal special ops boats were running off of it too so it's kind of cool and we continued to try to protect the shipping but Iran kept escalating and began striking out uh, at at our forces and eventually struck a US destroyer which is where this guy's video is going to come in. Uh, at that point, the gloves came off and Praying Mantis was put into effect. And uh, in the course of a day, Iran just got completely smoked by the United States Navy uh, and, and Marine Corps. We took out a few oil platforms. We took some prisoners, uh, treated them uh, as part of the command element, the military police detachment. There were only a few of us. Our job was to go out, round up the prisoners that the SEALs and that the infantry uh, picked up on these platforms that were being used as uh, as weapons platforms, these oil platforms they had turned into targeting platforms with rockets on them. Um, SEALs assaulted them and some marine recon elements assaulted them. We went and picked up the prisoners, brought them back, uh, put them on our tanker, and eventually they were returned to Iran. All right, and with that, let's uh, let's go ahead and get this thing kicked off. So this is uh, this is one of my favorite YouTube channels, if we're being honest. This is Operations Room, and uh, he very recently did uh, Operation Praying Mantis. So I thought it would just be interesting to uh, to sit and review this with a guy who was actually there. Let's get this kicked <laughs> off. It's the afternoon of April the fourteenth, nineteen eighty-eight. The USS Samuel B. Roberts, an Oliver Hazard Perry class guided missile frigate, is sailing through the central Persian Gulf. This is a dangerous time to be transiting the Gulf. The Iran-Iraq war is about to enter its seventh year, and both sides have grown desperate to end the conflict. The Iranian and Iraqi militaries have started to bomb shipping commerce in the Persian Gulf to cut off the other's war economy, in a conflict that has become known as the Tanker War. As part of Operation Earnest Will, the Samuel B. Roberts and other US Navy warships from the 7th Fleet are dispatched to the Middle East to escort tankers safely to their destinations. I just want to remind you, if there's anything you want to comment on, Joe, just tell me to pause and we'll pause it. Well, I want to say that he said that they deployed tankers. De deployed an entire Marine Air Ground Task Force, and as you know, that's an infantry battalion, uh, a Marine Air Squadron, and a logistics group, along with a small command element. We love around our 13, Around 1,300 people. We love our MAGTAPs. They're they're, we they're do. good. They're good hearty stuff. The frigate is transiting the Persian Gulf when lookouts spot objects floating in the water. They initially believe these to be dolphins, but a closer examination instead reveals magnetic mines. Commander Paul Rin is alerted and orders the Roberts to slowly reverse out of the minefield at minimum speed. After ten minutes of backing up, the ship's luck runs out. A magnetic mine detonates directly underneath the Robert's keel, nearly breaking the ship's back. Water gushes through a 15-foot hole, while a fire breaks out deep inside the frigate. The crew works tirelessly throughout the night, and manages to save the ship. Miraculously, there are no fatalities, and only 10 men have been wounded in the explosion. 
the frigate limps into Dubai for repairs. The following day, Navy EOD divers recover mines in the area and trace their serial numbers to Iran. The United States has previously caught Iranian ships laying mines in the Persian Gulf and warned Ayatollah Khomeini's government right that here. any further attempts to so, uh, the part where he said that we'd caught them uh, laying mines. That was part of Ernest Will. Uh, SEALs and Marine Recon got on boats, went out. We used helicopters and boats and went out and filmed uh, Navy frigates, following them, uh, frigates and, and little dows and things like that. And we caught them on video several times deploying mines uh, in this area. So, little known fact. To disrupt shipping will result in military action. For US President Ronald Reagan, the mining of the Samuel B. Roberts in international waters is the final straw. The President authorizes a retaliatory strike against the Iranian military, Operation Praying Mantis. Praying Mantis is intended as a proportionate strike to cripple the Iranians' ability to fight the tanker war. Three surface action groups, or SAGs, from the US 7th Fleet, each comprising an amphibious assault ship and two escorts, are formed for the operation and assign different tasks. SAG Bravo is Trenton. to assault and destroy the- Say again? I was on the USS Trenton during all of this. The Sasan and Rakesh ah. oil platforms, which have been used by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard as military bases. SAG Charlie is to attack the Siri platform, while SAG Delta will concentrate on sinking an Iranian warship in retaliation for the mining of the Samuel Roberts. Battlegroup Foxtrot is composed of the aircraft carrier Enterprise, along with its escorting ships, and will remain outside the Persian Gulf to provide air support. A key objective of the operation is to sink one of the two modern SAM-class frigates in the Iranian Navy, the Sahand and the Sabalan. These warships have been wreaking havoc on shipping in the Persian Gulf, often attacking neutral ships after they have already surrendered. Both frigates are considered priority targets for any naval forces in the area. At 7am on April the 18th, carrier USS Enterprise launches A6 Intruder aircraft and F-14 Tomcat fighters. Their mission will be to search out the Iranian vessels. Sad to see all of those go. Oh god, I was also just gonna say though, you'd be <laughs> hard pressed to find a goofier looking plane than the Intruder. Like, you really would, I'm sorry. It's called the queer for that very reason. <laughs> Look at that profile. Dude. It's proof that we're LGBTQ friendly, though. Facts. It's called the queer. Iranian vessels. A backup strike group of A7 Corsair attack aircraft will remain on deck alert and launch should more targets be detected. A Navy Hawkeye AWACS aircraft is also standing by. You know what? That deserves a pause too. The Corsairs didn't they didn't they call those the Gators because they they that low scoop out front would eat ground crew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep. And uh, both of those, the A7 and A6, I believe have a gold-lined cockpit for electronics protection, actually. Very cool. At the same time, SAG Bravo arrives at the Sasan oil platform, which also serves as a surveillance outpost for the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. SAG Bravo is comprised of two destroyers, the USS Merrill and the USS Lind McCormick, in addition to the amphibious transport USS Trenton. Captain James Perkins on board the Merrill orders a warning to be sent to the platform. A native Iranian speaker transmits the message in Farsi. Attention Sasan platform, this is US warship, this is your warning, you have five minutes to clear the platform before we commence fire. I just figured that was a good point at which you'd probably have something to say. <laughs> If not, well, I'll, if not, I'll just point, I'll edit and roll out. But go ahead. At 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 this point, a young eighteen year old Lance Corporal is like, "Dude, are we like legit about to do this?" Um, you know, it's all cool and fun and games being in the military, right up until you see like literally the enemy is right over there, uh, and we weren't exactly that close, but we could see the bump on the horizon, and you know they broadcast that radio call so that, like literally everyone could hear it because uh, it was kind of a momentous moment. So it was interesting to say the least. I can imagine. Uh, yeah. Well, I, the, the other thing that we should probably bring to light for people, because like you might assume that like, 
there was some grand speech before this began. And they're like, all right, everybody, the president's told us we're going to go whoop the Iranians' no. ass. Because, no, there was nothing. It was literally just another day. You were hanging out at the fucking chow hall, and then all of a sudden, you get a broadcast. Yeah. Well, I, being one of the MPs, there were only, uh, I think, 22 of us. Uh, I was in the command post when all that stuff was going on, so... But if you I hadn't knew, been, you, you'd have been. You just hadn't to... been, yeah. You would. You had no idea. Most guys on the ship had no idea. They just knew we changed direction, right? Just didn't know what was going on. Just semen schmuckatelli peeling potatoes. <laughs> All right. Immediately after the warning is transmitted, Iranians are spotted hurriedly boarding two small tugs tied to the platform. After a few minutes, the tugs race away from the facility. As a show of good faith, Captain Perkins extends the deadline to 20 minutes for the remaining Iranians to evacuate. At 8.08am, the platform is informed that its time is up, and the American destroyers open fire with their 5-inch guns. The first shells are deliberately set to airburst away from the target to encourage any remaining Iranians to hurry up and leave. Instead, ZSU 23mm guns on the platform open fire on the Bad American idea. warships. <laughs> and, and that's about as accurate as they were. That was a terrible idea on their part, for the record. The rounds fall short, and Merrill quickly fires a salvo which destroys the gun. Following this initial barrage, a ceasefire is requested, and the rest of the Revolutionary Guard personnel gathers on the platform. One of the tugs returns to their now smoking installation to take them off. Once the last Iranians are evacuated, the Merrill and Lind McCormick bombard the platform for another 40 minutes. At 9am, two Cobra gunships arrive to join the fray, firing tow anti-tank missiles at the barracks and raking the area with 20mm cannon fire. To ensure the complete destruction of the facility, a Marine assault force from the USS Trenton is briefly inserted from UH-1 helicopters onto the platform to plant explosive charges. At 1.10pm, the Sasan platform explodes with a deafening roar, while marines and sailors cheer. SAG Charlie had arrived at the Siri platform at the same time as Bravo, and has transmitted a similar warning to the Iranian installation. You now, looked like you were stepping up to the mic, so... Yeah, yeah, so... So, it's, it, it is mostly accurate that not 100% of the Iraqi or the Iranians had left. There were a couple of surrenders. Uh, and they were taken off. Those helos came from the uh, the the derelict tanker that we had turned into a landing platform, because, like I said, we had these were these were just um, these were LPAs, not not LHDs. So we didn't have a helicopter carrier. So um, we were using that tanker. That's where the helicopters were, and that's where we took the 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 prisoners over to. I was gonna say, I, I hope nobody was having to fast boat to and from an oil platform. That sounds like a bad day. Oh, they did in other ones. They did in other ones. Yeah, we'll see that here in a minute. Yeah. Here, the plan is for Navy SEALs to storm the facility after the defenses are neutralized. Once again, the Iranian occupants are granted more time to evacuate before the American warships open fire. 25 minutes after their arrival, the platform's tug pulls away and the initial bombardment begins. The destroyers USS Bagley and Wainwright fire 76mm and 5-inch shells at the Siri platform. Much like at the Sasan facility, the remaining Revolutionary Guards return fire with 20mm anti-aircraft guns, but their rounds fall well short. Cobra gunships are sent in to clear the way for the SEALs, who are standing by on their transport helicopter. However, the Iranian ZSUs are still able to fire back at the Cobras as they start their gun runs forcing them to fall back. In response, the Siri platform is pounded by naval gunfire, which sets the installation ablaze. The intense heat causes secondary explosions which rip the facility apart. The commander of SAG Charlie calls off the ground assault, leaving the keyed-up SEALs frustrated. Yeah, they weren't able to get on that one. Uh, it was way too intense. Um happens they did get on the third one though meanwhile a dangerous situation is developing near sag bravo as it moves north to destroy the rakesh oil platform 
A surface contact has been identified on radar, approaching the group at 25 knots. Captain Perkins orders general quarters. The destroyers prepare to open fire with standard and harpoon anti-ship missiles as Captain Perkins requests a visual on the target. He wants to be absolutely certain this is an enemy contact before attacking. A Navy Seahawk helicopter is dispatched, and radios back that the target is indeed a warship. However, it is not one of the Iranian frigates, but instead a destroyer of the Soviet Navy. When Captain Perkins asks his Russian counterpart of his intentions, the Soviet captain replies in heavily accented English that, I want to take pictures for history. Perkins stands down his anti-ship missile attack somewhat hastily. <laughs> that almost went very much bad. I mean, <laughs> war tourism is stupid, especially when it's a Russian destroyer. Oh. Uh, can you imagine being on the helicopter crew there? You, you know, you got, you're getting your guns loaded up because you, you know they're going to shoot at you, and you're like, oh, that's big red star. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's not cool. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, that was Soviets at the time, not just Russian. Whew. So... For, for another year. Yeah, yeah. After the destruction of the Sasan and Siri platforms, the Iranian Navy sorties in force to counterattack the Americans. By 11am, Revolutionary Guard gunboats and missile boats are assaulting any ship they can find, including the US-flagged civilian supply ship Willie Tide. The ship requests immediate support, and the Enterprise's loitering A6 intruders are sent to aid the ship. The A-6's commander, Lieutenant Commander Jim Engler, finds the Boghammer high-speed patrol boats that have peeled off from the Willy Tide and are now attacking an American oil platform. Engler radios the Hawkeye, please confirm cleared to engage the Boghammers. His request is passed all the way to President Reagan, who approves the strike. Engler and his wingman dive on the boats while the F-14 Tomcats hold position above the clouds to provide air cover. The Boghammers are fast-moving and difficult targets. They fire back at the attacking aircraft as Engler and his wingman release their munitions, but the Rock Eye cluster bombs only slightly damage one vessel, which turns for home. Disappointed by the results, Engler orders another bombing run on the other two Boghammers. The American aircraft consider switching to their laser-guided munitions, but the speedboats are moving so fast that they decide against it. Engler leads the second bombing run and drops two pods of cluster bombs, but again misses. However, his wingman correctly anticipates the path of one of the Boghammers and scores several direct hits. The Iranian craft stops dead in the water and starts sinking while the intruders report back of their success. At noon, Sag Charlie picks up a potential... Uh, I know that they're illegal now and, 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 and everything, but this was a classic time to use a rock eye. So, so what it does is it pops open, drops a bunch of grenade sized bomblets out. And for a fast moving, uh, fast attack boat, that's the perfect weapon. You just drop grenades right across its path and they walk right into them. Area denial. <laughs> Area denial. Special <laughs> hostile contacts on radar. A Seahawk helicopter from the USS Bagley is dispatched and identifies the contacts as the Joshan, a French-built missile boat that was inducted into the Iranian Navy after the 1979 revolution. Captain Chandler has no intention of attacking the vessel, but his task force must sail towards the Iranian ship to intercept more bog hammers. Captain Chandler warns the missile craft to leave the area, or it will be fired upon. The Joshan acknowledges the warning, but keeps approaching the American ships in an aggressive manner. Captain Chandler issues another warning to which the Iranian captain responds, I'm carrying out my mission, and ceases radio communication. A final warning is that transmitted to the idea. Joshan at 12.13pm. Stop, abandon ship, I intend to sink you. The Iranian missile craft responds by locking its fire control radar on the USS Wainwright. Captain Chandler orders his task force to attack the Iranian ship. The guided missile frigate USS Simpson fires four standard missiles while the Wainwright fires one. As the missiles streak into the air, the Wainwright's fire control center reports Vampire inbound. An orbiting Seahawk confirms that the Joshan has fired a Harpoon anti-ship missile at the Wainwright. With both Iranian and US missiles in the air, the American warships fire off chaff rockets and activate their jamming equipment to draw away the Harpoon missile. 
The opposing missiles pass by each other. The Iranian ship has no defence against fast-moving American missiles. All five impact the Joshan head-on, and the Iranian missile ship comes to a halt. Meanwhile, the chaff rockets have successfully diverted the harpoon, which screams past the American ships and explodes harmlessly in the water. The USS Bagley fires its own harpoon anti-ship missile, while closing the distance to the Iranian vessel with the Wainwright. The harpoon misses the Joshan, but the enemy vessel is now dead in the water anyway from the earlier missile hits. As the American ships move in to finish off the ship, Captain Chandler is alerted to three Iranian F-4 Phantoms which have been picked up by the Hawkeye AWACS. Hey, pause As the Phantoms right close to just 30 I believe, and we'll, we'll see if this goes on, I believe at this point they went old school and laid alongside and boarded that ship and, and fought it out like like 1800s. So let's see if that makes it into the video. 30 miles, Chandler decides to drive them away. At 12.50pm, the Wainwright fires two SM-2 standard anti-aircraft missiles. They streak across the sky and hit their targets at the same time. One of the F-4s explodes in mid-air, while the other is damaged and forced to limp back to Iranian airspace. With the hostile aircraft dealt with, SAG Charlie turns its attention back to the wounded Joshan. The Wainwright, Simpson and Bagley finish it off with gunfire before they are ordered to disengage. At this time, Guess not. Maybe the boarding was Psych a different ship. They boarded a ship, so... Hmm. I, 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 I can't quite remember. We'll see. We'll see. Bravo has been ordered to cancel its assault on the Rakesh oil platform. American Middle East Command is growing uneasy at the expanding scope of the operation, and instead seek to de-escalate the situation. Yet, at 1pm, the guided missile destroyer USS Joseph Strauss of SAG Delta detects the radar of an Iranian SAM-class frigate, the target that the Americans have been waiting for. However, there is hesitation on whether to go after the vessel. The US Navy has already sunk an enemy warship and there is no visual contact. Admiral Less orders the target to be identified first before any attack is planned. The reserve A-7 Corsair aircraft aboard the Enterprise are launched and ordered to stand by for any enemy contact. At 2.40pm, one of the earlier launched A6s, piloted by Deputy Carrier Air Group Commander Bud Langston, is searching for the target. Flying at 15,000 feet, Langston spots something below and dives through the clouds to just 50 feet above the waters of the Straits of Hormuz for a closer look. He approaches the stern of the vessel on the port side. As he draws near, anti-aircraft guns aboard the ship open fire on his intruder but Langston is flying so low that the gunners cannot depress their barrels enough to hit him. The A-6 buzzes the ship, and Langston confirms that he has found the Iranian frigate Sahand. Several SA-2 SAMs chase after the intruder but miss. The surface ships of SAG Delta have been tasked with destroying the Iranian frigates, but the rules of engagement of Enterprise's strike aircraft authorise them to take defensive measures if they are fired upon. Langston decides to attack the Sahand, and transmits a warning over the Revolutionary Guard's channel, informing the frigate, I'm going to sink you in five minutes. With no response, <laughs> Langston lines up the shot with his intruder's harpoon, hey, bro, but the back. missile fails to fire. He swings around while his bombardier works through the weapon release checklist. On the second run, the harpoon drops free and ignites, accelerating towards the target. The Enterprise's flight controller checks in with Langston, to which the A-6 pilot responds that he has found the Sahand. The controller asks, what are your intentions? Langston replies, well he shot at me, I'm now 12 miles out and I just launched a harpoon missile, I'm waiting for it to hit. <laughs> a few seconds later, the harpoon explodes amidships and the Sahand stops dead in the water. Langston bears down on the burning ship and drops- What are your intentions? Well, it doesn't matter much at this point, bastard's gonna <laughs> die. <laughs> Hey, I know I forgot to ask you something. Uh, can I attack this ship? And I already did, by the way. Oops. <laughs> it's a 500 well pound laser guided bomb, which is also a direct hit. He transmits the Sahan's coordinates to another strike aircraft as he swings around for one final run with his two 1,000 pound laser guided skipper bombs. The intruder lines up the shot before the bombardier releases both skippers right above the ship. 
One fails to track and misses, while the other makes a direct hit on the bridge. Satisfied, Langston reports that the Sahand is sinking and turns back to base. By this time, the ships of Sag Delta are now in the area with the arriving A-7 Corsairs overhead. The USS Joseph Strauss launches another harpoon at the Sahand, while the other A-6 and the A-7s take turns bombing the burning hulk. A combination <laughs> of skippers, walleye television guided bombs and rock eye cluster bombs further devastate the pride of the Iranian navy. In the late afternoon, the fires aboard the Sahand finally reach her magazine and the ship disappears in a violent explosion. At the same time, the Joseph Strauss detects another SAM class frigate and vectors Commander Engler to the target. The A6 has air to air refueled since Engler's earlier attack on the Iranian bog hammers and still has a 500 pound bomb and rock eyes aboard. Engler spots the other modern Iranian frigate, the Sabalan. The warship fires SAMs at the American aircraft, which miss, and Engler begins his attack. The A6 climbs to 17,500 feet and then dives on the Sabalan at a 35 degree angle. The anti aircraft fire is much more intense than it was from the Sahand but Engler presses on. He releases his bomb and pulls out of his dive while the bombardier guides the munition on target. It hits the Iranian frigate and detonates directly in the engine room. Engler circles for another run to drop cluster bombs on the burning vessel, but decides against it due to the heavy anti-aircraft fire. More A6s with their F-14 fighter escorts arrive on station before they are called off. Defence Secretary Frank Carlucci and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Admiral William Crow have decided to end offensive operations for the day. Crow tells Admiral Less that we've shed enough blood today, and the wounded Sabalan is allowed to be towed back to port. In response to the American strikes, the Iranians launch silkworm anti-ship missile attacks so against Sag Delta. The e so the boarding actually I, I was when we first arrived in September. This was this all happened later in the in the operation. Makes sense. So earlier in September we actually caught a ship. The the SEALs caught a ship in the act of laying mines and uh boarded it and took it over and then brought it back to the Hercules barge that uh everything was on. This is ours uh, now. I, I, <laughs> yeah. It was it was a while back and I'm old, so uh, oh, don't worry I that. knew that we boarded something and took it. I'm like like 1800 style, you know, boarding a ship uh, during combat. Not like not like you see now. You see boardings, but they're just really searches, right? This was a hey, we just shot that ship up. We're gonna lay alongside it, pull out swords, and board this dang ship. Well, and, and um, name the last non pirate boarding that wasn't like the, the last successful non-pirate boarding that wasn't accomplished using a helicopter drop like you fast rope in you're not you're, you know, you know you, you're not rowing your way over <laughs> right evening right. of april the 18th so it was boarded by, but no uh, u.s ships seals and special boat unit i'm sorry seals and special boat units boarded it so cool stuff anyway. damaged more than this nation building stuff that we were doing in iraq and afghanistan this is naval warfare, and this is expeditionary warfare at its best. All right. With that said, if you guys, uh, if you like this one, go ahead and leave us a comment down below. Let us know what conflict you'd like Joe to react to next. I'll talk to you later.